Uh, it's really nice to see such a great turnout. So let's jump right in. We're talking about um, oral interactions. We're sharing what our centers do, I guess, um, for the centers who are curious what's happening elsewhere or also the ones that are implementing the new program and are not. Has offered to share, but I will add, last year as part of the team, she did, um, for the Rencontre Gestionnaire, she presented several examples, so we're we're lucky that she's going to do that for us today. And she has to leave early, so I already told her she can go first. All right. Okay, so last year at the Rencontre Nationale in Quebec City, we were asked to present how different centres were organizing their oral evaluations. And uh, so basically, um, the question is more for, well, it's for FBC and FBD. This is just a summary of how the exams are structured. And basically what centers are finding difficult with the exams is um, when it comes time to do the notes preparation uh, in FBC and the notes review in FBD, they're wondering where are centers doing this and who is supervising it. So we looked at what different centers were doing. And then also centers wanted to know how teachers can, how we can organize teacher schedules in order to do the interactions immediately after the notes review and also be in an isolated location. So when I contacted different centers, uh, there were most of, most of the models that are quite similar with just subtle differences. And so there's five that I found. Um, the first one is Bose HMI, which for those of you who know Fran Brandau, this is her school board. And at the time, they were doing it quite simply just because um, they didn't have a formal, formal process set up. And the interactions for them are done outside of class time. And the, the teachers are remunerated after the fact. It's not actually worked into their contracts and all of their interactions are recorded. So everything is happening, the student, the teacher is supervising the notes revision and also doing the interaction. It's quite simple what they're doing. This is Commission Scolaire de l'Energie and I actually think I should leave this one to uh, Tommy Champagne to explain if I could put him on the spot. <laughs> okay. Uh, donc à la Commission Scolaire de l'Energie, on a signé un enseignant à l'interaction orale. C'est Annie qui est juste à côté de moi, donc elle va pouvoir compléter aussi euh, la présentation. Euh, euh, les enseignants inscrivent leurs élèves pour faire euh, la, les deux parties, la, les deux sections en fait, la section interaction puis la section euh, interprétation. On a un système euh, d'inscription qui s'appelle GRR, qui est un système informatisé. Donc euh, les enseignants, quand ils inscrivent euh, un élève en examen, Annie reçoit automatiquement euh, l'inscription elle aussi, là, puis elle peut le, le placer à son agenda. Cette année, les interactions sont le... C'est le mardi. So, uh, there is a fixed day for the interaction. So, the students go to uh, their preparation in the morning at 8, and then I meet with them in the afternoon between 1.30 and 3.30. And so, I allow 15 minutes, so I can have up to 8 students per afternoon. If, uh, for example, we're going to have more and more students because uh, the, the vacation are coming. So uh, I'm allowed to have some more students on Wednesdays. So when I have eight, seven or eight on Tuesdays, then we, uh, in French, with uh, in, here we say, uh, on déborde le mercredi. So we can have some more on, on Wednesdays. Ce n'est pas la situation idéale. Par les années passées, l'interprétation et l'interaction se déroulaient dans le même avant-midi. Donc, les élèves allaient en salle d'examen à 8 heures, faisaient leur partie interprétation, quittaient la salle d'examen, puis avaient rendez-vous avec Annie tout de suite après pour faire la partie euh, interac interaction. Okay, it was at between 10.30 and 12.30 instead of 1.30, 3.30. Mais là, il y a eu des contraintes. Cette année, on est en baisse de fréquentation euh, très, très importante euh, dans toutes les matières, particulièrement en anglais. Puis, on n'a pas pu euh, organiser l'horaire d'Annie pour qu'elle puisse rencontrer les élèves euh, immédiatement après leur partie euh, interprétation. Donc, elle les rencontre euh, dans l'après-midi pour faire euh, l'interaction. Uh, everything is done in the uh, exam room for now because it's uh, no one is going there in the afternoon. So, 
the exam room is uh, is just available for us to do the interaction too. And Annie, yeah. Oh, yeah. just a question: Who does the supervision of the notes review? I do. Oh, you do. Okay. Um, what is the software that you're using so it gets transferred to your agenda automatically? Well, actually, it's not really transfer. I have to go and have a look at it. I'm sorry, you have to? I have to go get a look at it. I have to open it and then just see who we, who is coming with me. And then uh, in the corridor, I just write the names. I have a schedule and the, the students, they come and say, oh, OK, yeah, my turn will be at 2 o'clock. So they come and wait at the door at 2 o'clock. Then I have another one at 2.15 and the other one 2.30. Oh, OK, I think I misunderstood it. Stood. I thought somehow when they reserve the exam, it gets sent to you. Whereas I have to book all of my manually. It's very time consuming. That was just uh, uh, if they go to the. This is a program, well, not a program. This is like a, not an application. Yes. An application, uh, you know, Tusca, but it's something just like that. But um, the, uh, the 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 person that take uh, is uh, responsible for the exam room. That's how we tell her we send a student to the exam room. She looks at it every day and she prints everything for the next day. I do the same for the interaction. So uh, maybe I could add some things uh, while I'm waiting. The students, they really like the way we're functioning because it's on a fixed day. And as for the 5101, 5102, it's easy to say that I will give the preparation booklet um, the Wednesday to go to the exam on the next Tuesday. So it's really easy to know that, you know, if it's not every day, go, oh, how many hours did you get your, uh, so how many hours did you get your booklet to work in it? And then so we don't make any mistakes. So like, since it's on a fixed day, we really like that. Yeah. All right. So I'll continue on. The next school board that shared their model with us was Marie Victorin. And basically, they have a pretty similar process to uh, Tommy Champagne and Annie Lafreniere. There is an assigned teacher that does the interactions. And that teacher, once he does all of the interactions, he will actually give the recordings to the student's teacher for correction. However, the difference in Marie Victorin is that the students do their revision, their notes revision, in the exam room. And so the teacher who's doing the interactions is not responsible for the 15 or 26 minutes of notes review. Um, on the bottom of those slides, if you want more information about a particular model, the contact person is on the slide, so you can contact them directly. Next is uh, my school board, Commission Scolaire des Premières Seigneuries. Uh, what we do at our school board is, um, like Marie Victorin, the students do their notes revision in the exam room, and then after, immediately after their notes revision, they do their interactions. The students do the interactions with their teacher, um, but we do share students, so there, there is some flexibility, and even to the point where if a student is more comfortable with one teacher than another, we will uh, will sometimes evaluate each other's students. Um, what's a bit different with our system is that we send the students to the exam room at 15 minute intervals so that they come out of the exam room and go directly into their interaction with us. And so the teachers have one, one or two periods a week where they're not teaching, where they're available to do interactions. But at that same time, the exam room is open. And uh, usually in an afternoon, um, we can do up to about six interactions. It's a lot, but we sometimes have to do that. And uh, so far, it's going fairly well. Our, our initial concern was that it would be very disturbing to the students in the exam room to have students coming in at 15-minute intervals. But uh, so far, no one's complained, and the students are, are quite respectful and are quite quiet, so it's working well. Um, also, as much as possible, we try to have the interpretation and the notes revision and the interaction done in one shot, so in one afternoon. If we can't, usually uh, it's never separated by more than a day. 
All right. And the last school board that we saw was the Commission Scolaire de Saint-Hyacinthe, and that's uh, Mylène Goulet. I don't think Mylène is here, is she? Um, so in their school board, um, in Mylène's school board in Saint-Hyacinthe, the teacher is actually replaced during his class time to do the interactions. So if a teacher has, for example, four interactions scheduled, he'll be released for that period of time and another teacher will come into his class and then the, student, the teacher will go do the interactions. Um, if the teacher does not have any interactions, the replacement is cancelled. Okay. And I think okay. that, yeah, that's all the models that we looked at. That doesn't mean there aren't more models, but most of them, most of the models that are out there are, are a variation of what I've presented. Back to you, Laurie. Yeah, Terry, the, the way that your center does it, um, that was, I'm glad you mentioned that that was a concern for both your staff and your students in terms of interruptions, because that's why we didn't really propose that to our administration. Um, it's good to know that you didn't have any disruptions, because um, the way we're doing it now, this year, it's a little bit awkward, but uh, it's, it's functional. Um, the students go to the exam room in the morning and when they're finished they have to wait for me in the afternoon so I have to do the notes review with them. It's one-on-one -on -one, uh, and it's time consuming. I would have liked mm -hmm. to have it back the way a lot of the centres are doing it but I'm hoping that's a discussion we can have for next year. And like some of the models you have presented um, and the one I have here by uh, Julie Noiseau, it's the same thing where at the end of the year when you have less you have, fewer, you have fewer students and less enrollment, then they just shut your class earlier. Um, and then you are credited the amount of time that you spent doing those interactions. So I keep track of it all in an Excel sheet. I time it from when I get my stuff ready for the student, notes review, and my preparation for the interaction right until we're done. And then, like, if they have questions after, you know, like, oh, you know, how much is left of my program? That kind of stuff I don't count because it's not really part of the interaction. So Julie had asked me to share um, uh, with all of you uh, what they do at her centre. She couldn't attend the webinar today. That's uh, Julie Noiseau from Centre L'Impulsion in Laval. Um, so it's the same thing as what I said. She's in class every morning, so she schedules an appointment in the afternoon individually. And it's, since it's présence d'élève, uh, she gets 15 minutes for each sec, 4 to 5, and 30 minutes. I, she probably means 26 minutes for um, pre-secondary, uh, sec one and sec two. And just like um, at our center, that's when she has her class time reduced so that she can be uh, com compensated for that time during her TNP. And she says that it works out really well for them because uh, then it doesn't cost the school anything in terms of paying for a supply teacher. And since they have uh, fewer students at the end of the year, it works out well for them as well to close a class early. And she said that she had to work pretty hard to get that implemented at her center. Um, but for confidentiality reasons and respecting the program, uh, she was very happy that that was successfully implemented. So I had Can I, I would present that. Yes. Um, I'll just add something, Laurie, for in our center, like in Julie's center, we are also paid for 15 minutes en présence d'élève. So we keep track of our, our interactions and then we submit uh, our time and it's added to our, our cours et leçons. And that was something that for us, initially we started off by getting 10 minutes from our, our administration. But once we kept track of actually how long it does take to do the evaluations, uh, to do the interactions, it was uh, it was obvious that it was a minimum of 15 minutes was required. And so, just so, just to let other people know that that is what we're getting in our center. Which is a, that's a nice win. Oh hi, um, I'm I'm really glad that you said that um, Terry that you said that the exams take at least 15 minutes because. When I read uh, four to six minutes, it's no, no it's never that. And um, and and uh, here at our center, um, we have uh, dispo. I'm sorry about that. We have dispos, uh, which are not TNP. TNP is something else. 
But when I'm not in class, my exams are on Wednesdays. All the exams are on Wednesday, Thursdays, and Fridays. So I arrange to have my dispose on the same day that I send my students. So they go to the exam, and then after that, they come, they come out, and I go get the exam, and I, um, I do the interaction with them after they had their um, 15, 20 minutes. And quite often, I take um, re reviewing his notes or her notes. Um, what I do is I, I the guide about it. So th at the same time that the student is um, re reviewing his notes or her notes, um, what I do is I, I review my notes, my, my correction guide, and, and then after that, we start the oral interaction. So it works pretty well here for that. But I, I was uh, I was um, I, I was glad to hear that some time is recognized for uh, the oral interactions here. It's part of our task, so they don't mm -hmm. recognize any time for that. But I think they should because we're in présence of d'étudiants, of course. So um, okay. But it was really um, but it's really interesting. And I was wondering uh, for you guys. Um, um, about the research um, that the, the kids do, or the students do, um, they take it to the exam room, but after that, uh, are they allowed to review what they had in their uh, research notes? I was just wondering um, about that. I, yeah, I can answer that, Danielle. Um, in terms of the research, uh, their preparation booklet, they take into the exam room with them and they have that during the uh, one hour of interpretation. Following that, when they do their 15 minutes of notes revision, they only have the actual notes that they prepared during the interpretation, and then the explanation of the task for the interp um, like the task to what they call. Those are the only sheets they're allowed during their actual 15 minutes of revision. Okay. Does that answer your question, Danielle? Oh, yes. Well, that's what I do anyway. Okay. So. Annie and uh, Tommy. Okay. This is JRA. This is the where we uh, we write our exams for the lady in the exam room. This is what it looks like. We have all the dates here. Um, so we have exams on uh, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays. We don't have any on Mondays. And let me just go for next week. You see all the green spots? It means that uh, those desks are available for uh, adding more students for the exam. So for me here, I have Annie Gilna that will go to do our 4102, um, Mardi le 11, and she's allowed to a third of time uh, more than uh, is supposed to. Then we have Andrian that will go Kevin and Megan, and so I write everything, everybody here, and the other teachers do too. See, Colette said that Lucie will go to do a French exam on Monday. So, on Monday the 11th, I have Annie Gilina that will come to see me at 1.30 for her uh, interaction. Then Adrian will come at 1.45 and so on. I still have room for three more students, uh, four more students here. And when it's going to be full, then I go on Mercredi. So Mercredi, I have no one because Mardi is not full. So I, I'm not going there uh, on Wednesdays. So this is the program or the application we use here at school. It's uh, Everybody's doing, using it. When I want to order a preparation booklet, I do it here too. So uh, she, the, the lady in the, the exam room, she prepares it, and then she hands it to me. And that's how. Uh, that's how it works. Um, I, I don't know if you have any questions or. Can you, OK. My question, Annie, I asked it, but I see that your students are spaced 15 minutes apart. You supervise the notes revision as well as doing the interaction with them? Yeah. So I'm just saying, doesn't that take more than 15 minutes? Uh, no, because uh, maybe Tammy can. Uh, cet automne, on n'est pas dans nos conditions optimales, étant donné la baisse de fréquentation. L'horaire d'Annie a changé. Euh, en début d'année, Annie faisait ses, ses interactions avec les élèves le matin, donc tout de suite après l'interprétation. Puis, euh, le 20, en fait, on a collé les deux séances, non pas les deux séances, les deux sections dans la même séance. Donc, la ouais. section 1 et 
L'interaction était suivie d'une autre review, puis euh, de l'interaction avec l'élève. Puis là, on, on est plus ou moins là-dedans depuis quelques semaines à cause de, du changement d'horaire, Dani, qui okay. a été euh, fait dans l'après-midi. Fait que les, les élèves sont toujours euh, en interprétation le matin avec le notes review. Puis quand ils arrivent à leur, euh, leur rendez-vous de l'après-midi, il a pas de. Le notes review a été fait. Il, il, fait oh, okay. il, il, il y a comme une mise au diapason là, de 3-4 minutes avec Annie. Et, il décide du rôle euh, qu'il va prendre pendant la. L'interaction, qui débute l'interaction, est-ce que c'est l'élève, est-ce que c'est Annie, elle rappelle les consignes, puis euh, il débute l'enregistrement. OK, oui. It's, it's difficult logistically, yeah. Ouais, Annie est munie d'un no. marqueur, marqueur noir, puis euh, elle règle les informations. S'il y a des informations qui ne sont pas euh, autorisées, c'est des, des phrases. phrases. C'est des phrases oui. complètes. Annie règle des, des éléments sur la feuille de notes, puis okay. la remet à l'élève. Okay. Ça fait là, puis c'est enregistré parce que c'est co-corrigé. Donc, tout est enregistré, tout est déposé sur euh, Google, euh, Drive. Google Drive. Okay. Donc, Annie, c'est l'enseignante qui fait les interactions, mais elle ne corrige que ses propres élèves. Euh, les autres enseignants corrigent euh, les interactions de leurs propres élèves à partir de l'enregistrement. OK. Well, thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, thanks, Terry, for that question. I was kind of wondering that myself, but... Um... Covered. Uh, Martin had a question about what does it mean when I say close the class. Um, for what my administration had asked me to do is every six weeks submit an Excel sheet with the amount of time I have accumulated with which student and uh, which exam, which is why I really like that software that you guys have. It looks so automated. I think it would save a lot of uh, manual data entry. And then at the end of the year, so let's say for example, I had 18 hours worth of oral interactions, 18 divided by 3 is 6, so they would uh, notify the students that English would finish six days earlier than the last day on the calendar. And that's how they compensate us because it is in présence d'élève. Um, and then I spend that time at the center doing the TP, TNP, and all of the things that I couldn't do during the year. I'm hoping that answers the question and from what I understand a lot of the other centers are using that model as well as opposed to uh, hiring a supply teacher. Yeah. Um, okay. So somebody is asking if Annie can repeat the preparation in French class, uh, I think Kodruta is asking a question. Could you repeat, Annie? There was a problem with the sound. Are they doing the preparation in French class? Annie, if you don't mind, could you or Tommy answer that question, please? I, if I may, I think it's also because you mentioned that before they do, uh, while you're with one student, the other student is waiting in the French class. Is that Maybe what you said? Yeah. If they're in their French class, then they have to come and see me at 2.30. Then they, they tell the teachers, I have to go for my uh, English interaction. Then they come and see me, I sign a paper, and then after they go back to French class. OK? Yeah. We do something similar. And what I wanted to offer was this year, something new for us is Um, our administration has offered me 20 minutes per interaction and that's really exciting because like you guys had mentioned when you do the notes review and for me a lot of my students have extra time so I have to give them that additional third of time for the notes review plus the interaction honestly quite often I, I'm going over I'm doing maybe 30 minutes per interaction sometimes no um, Sometimes with the prior learning, it's very, very short because um, some of my students are really strong in English. So in the end, I'm hoping it will balance out. Uh, but it's I, I, I'm very excited that they had proposed that this year. What, is there anything about like enriched, um, like 55-55? Uh, it was the old program, 55-55. But what about 51-04-05? Uh, uh, um, is there anything uh, coming out soon? Okay. Uh, so. Uh, Danielle, yeah, um, in rich, uh, sorry, optional courses is what you're asking about, yes? Yeah. Oh, we have Mano here. Mano, do you want to take this question? <laughs> sure. Uh, I'll 
I'll do my best, and you can and you can uh, help me out, Lori. Uh, uh, Lori is the one who actually is helping me out to uh, with the PLE right now, and we've just 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 slightly began to revise the the optionals, but we will be working. It's it's our priority to work with the optionals. So um, for the exam, so so. Basically, what we want to do so that the net we, we we understand the priority is to have the DDEs out as soon as possible. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to release the DDEs, and um, and then uh, we'll work with the prototypes for the optionals. Uh, and so, uh, but even you have to understand that even if we release the DDEs. We, uh, even, w even when they're ready, we still have to send them to linguistic review, so it, it is going to take some time. I cannot give you an exact date, but um, this is our priority because that's what you got. We, we heard some, some teachers sharing how this was crucial for them, and so that's, this is our first thing, that, the first thing we're doing. Oh, uh, go ahead, Danielle. Oh, I'm sorry, my big mouth. Um, uh, you talked about the PLT, the prior learning test, right? Is there a new version about that? Because my God, what we have here is like out of date. I know. Can you, talk I know you right now. I have basically three priorities. Uh, the first one is to release the DDEs. The P, uh, the second, or I'd say one B, is the PLEs, and then the other is to validate the tens because the tens are also, there were some problems uh, uh, with the, I think it's believed last year or something. I, I'm, again, I'm not, this was just came up as a, my mandate for the tens just came up this week. So I'm not really familiar with the, that whole thing, but I know that this, these are the three things that I'm working on. Uh, and then we can work on the actual uh, prototypes for the optional courses. Thank you. Oh, I, I do have one uh, message from the Safad. Uh, um, I know it's not really related to uh, the the PLEs or the or the optional courses, but um, last uh, the last uh, webinar that we had, someone mentioned Safad, and uh, I saw also on the forum that someone mentioned that they would like to have a diagnostic test for uh, the students and um, also some someone was working maybe on a course like a or sort of a mise à niveau. I met with Madame Pajot from the Safad and right now they're actually uh, planning a diagnostic test and they want to work on a course for the mise à niveau. So anyone who would be interested in uh, working with the Safad as a uh, like you know, a content expert to develop the course, uh, and I, I believe the the diagnostic test as well. That I'm not clear on the the, the, the details, but you could definitely contact the Safad because they're um, they're 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 about they're they're doing this they're doing the work now. They're they're starting to write up that course, so that might help you guys as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we we do things a bit differently in our school board. Um, I do it during class time, but I reserve certain periods um, in the, my class time where if I have exams to do, I'm not available to students and they do know that. And I have, I'm lucky enough to have a uh, small office right next to my classroom where I can do the oral interaction um, and uh, be back after the oral interaction, which I do record all of them. Yeah, they. I'm. I'm very lucky. Um, the room is right next to my classroom, and so and it's um, it's a bare room. So they, I um, isolate them there to do their notes review, and it's locked, so no one can come in. And um, Eventually, my school director is planning on putting a window between the two rooms, between my classroom and that room, to facilitate this. Um, and then uh, the students, while I'm doing interaction, um, don't have supervision. 
but they opt to stay in the class rather to let them go. And uh, so there are moments where, and I try to plan so I don't have too many um, tests in on one session, so I put them out throughout the week. Uh, and uh, it works so far, but it's always a question of how many exams. Uh, just, Danielle, I want to add something about the prior learning, but we'll go to Annie first. À la dernière rencontre nationale, quand j'ai discuté avec Annie Lefebvre, elle me disait que euh, l'équipe avait rédigé de nouvelles épreuves pour euh, la quatrième et la cinquième secondaire des versions des, des euh, EF. Elle me disait même que toutes les épreuves avaient été complètement remodelées. Est-ce que c'est des épreuves qui vont voir le jour bientôt? Les autres épreuves n'ont pas été faites. OK, elles n'ont pas été remodelées. Les épreuves, non. Mais par contre, c'est ça qu'on va faire suite après avoir fait les cours optionnels. C'est les versions euh, DEF qu'on va faire suite à ça avec l'équipe qui va, qui, qui va continuer le travail. Okay. Mais, les, les, mais les versions DEF ne sont pas faites. C'est le travail de, de cette année. Mais là, on s'entend que si on commence en janvier, ça va être retardé parce que je ne crois pas qu'on y arrive. On a essayé, on a engagé, de, de, on essaie d'engager des nouvelles personnes. On recrute présentement, on, a, on est en négociation avec deux autres personnes pour élargir l'équipe, euh, pour essayer justement de, de, de pouvoir tenter de répondre à, pour la fin juin. Mais on a vraiment un gros doute qu'on qu y arrive. Par contre, on va y être avec, avec l'équipe qu'on a, avec Laurie, euh, Roxanne et, et, et compagnie, j'ai confiance qu'eux, ils, ils savent très bien c'est quoi les priorités du, du réseau. Puis on va, on va procéder par priorité. Même chose avec euh, pour tout ce qui est les, con, con, concernant les, un bris confidentialité. Ça aussi, ça devient comme une priorité aussi. Donc, euh, on va, et ça, on va, je vais travailler avec Mme Danielle No pour euh, le, le bris con, confidentialité. Donc, ça va venir tranquillement euh, par les priorités. Donc, Merci beaucoup. Euh, Mano, there's a question for you. Uh, people would like a time frame for the DEDs, for the optional courses, potentially next spring, next summer, next fall. How about tomorrow? <laughs> yeah. Um, you know uh, you may you may know that it's difficult to give a date and because we we never know what can happen if we have requests are there priorities some coming from the minister but uh let's just say that this we're working on it right now uh how long it so so i don't think it's going to be next summer i think it's going to be <laughs> Uh, for, at least for the optionals, right? For the the DEDs optionals, um, so it it will be before that. And you know, if you don't get a chance or you want to add something, these webinars are for us. So if we want to revisit something in a future one, absolutely, just let me know and and I'll put it on the list to make sure we address it. Okay, it's a, it's a community space for us to get our questions answered, share information, and not reinvent the wheel. So I don't think there are any hands up. Uh, what I wanted to say, Dan oh, yes, Danielle. Doing it again. There is um, the oral evaluation in English as a second language um, pre presented by Equipe Shock Pedagogic. That document is available for us there? This particular like, document? Yeah. Absolutely. If you go on the CCBE DBE website, you go into teacher or teacher resources, the teacher tab, you'll see training. It will link you to the accompaniment FGA website and in there you will see it listed along with the same, um, sorry, not the same, along with the presentation for the previous year's rencontre gestionnaire and block training documents as well. There's a whole bunch of stuff. If you can't find it, shoot me a little email and I'll walk you through where to find it. What I wanted to say for you, if you have students that are really strong in English, they can do the prior learning for the enriched level. It has a different code now, but then they can get six extra credits with well, that. four now, right? It's four credits now? 
This well with the prior learning, it's still the old program. So if they complete the prior learning to the enriched level for that enriched course, they can get six extra credits. Oh, okay. The new program, new program is four, yes, and new prior learning in terms of credits. Um, I am not really sure right now what that is. Very quickly, I know you're all really busy. Um, thanks. Twenty-seven people filled out the survey. That's great. Thank you. Um, the topics people liked the most. This, these are the ones that I'm going to prepare for you in the, in the future um, webinars. Just hold on, they don't have all of their labels on them. Uh, learning strategies for English as a second language program. When to correct a language learner, how to correct, to which part do you correct, how often, et cetera. That's a really hot topic. Differentiating for uh, English as a second language. And this is all for adult ed too. And if you're only uh, using learning situations for your teaching materials, and that is not a book, uh, which ones to use first, in the middle, um, as a pre-evaluation, et cetera. Those were the four topics that were of most interest. So those are, and also, like uh, Mano said, SOFAD is, I guess, creating a tool uh, for students who have gaps in their knowledge. That was a question a teacher had sent me. Um, I'm glad they're working on it because that's a huge topic. I don't know if I could come up with a solution that fast. The availabilities, uh, most people are available Friday mornings, Thursday mornings, and Monday afternoons. If you really want to attend and it's not on those days, just let me know. I'll alternate them between them. We've had one Monday afternoon and now Friday afternoon, so we'll go to Friday morning and Thursday morning, um, and then I'll pick another time on Monday. So if there's something beyond that, just let me know to accommodate you. Laurie, I would have a comment actually. I, there's one thing I did forget about Safad. Um, Madame, Madame Pajot mentioned that um, they're also working, they, they, they released a, a grammar book uh, to, to uh, you know, for all, for all the levels. It's like a, a grammar book, but they're working on uh, videos for strategies. Um, they've released that on the French side, and now they're working uh, for the English side, but they believe they're also thinking of ESL at the same time as they're doing it. So I believe that um, that's going to be very useful for, for all of you guys. They're, so basically, they, 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 they discuss the strategies, they model the strategies. So it should be interesting. It sounded, sounded interesting. Yes, thank you. And that is all. No, I've, uh, I've received an evaluation copy of their grammar book. Um, so if it's something that interests you for your center, I would encourage you to contact them and see if you can get a, a copy to have a look at, to see if it's something that you, would be useful um, to your students. So uh, thank you all for joining us. And wait for the next email for the next one. I'm guessing it'll be in February. And I'll send an email out with the topic. And I thank you all for coming. Take care, everyone.